Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this new episode of the Rosen Rubini podcast, Making Sense of This World. My name is Manus Child, and as always, I'm joined by CEO and Head of Research, Mr. Brunella Rosa. Uh, this week, we'll be talking about the Russian oil embargoes versus price caps when ideology trumps economic logic uh, as a topic of this week's newsletter. Brunello, uh, oil and gas prices have been rising steadily upwards the last couple of years. Uh, before we jump into uh, the Russian oil embargo, let's set the stage. Um, what sort of factors have been dominating the, the, the oil prices over the last couple of years? Well, as you know, uh, the global economy uh, went into a severe recession during the uh, lockdowns uh, uh, related to the pandemic. And as a result of the recession, uh, of course, energy prices tend to fall in general. In that particular case, given the total disruption in supply chains, oil could not uh, go around in super tankers and uh, the cost of uh, storage became huge. For that reason, we even saw negative oil prices for the first time in history. Now, of course, that was a total market dislocation that uh, got uh, corrected. But eventually, we, uh, we saw uh, oil prices around $20 uh, per barrel in, in, the 20, in, in 2020, more or less. And guess what? The economy reopened. Um, Supply chains remained in place uh, in terms of constraints, and uh, the war in Ukraine started. All these factors contributed to oil prices rising way above $100 per barrel, $110, $115. So um, clearly, um, we are seeing this huge increase in, in oil prices. Gas prices have been more or less the same story, not as much in terms of disruption in global supply chain, because gas also goes via pipelines. It doesn't require physical movement unless it's uh, liquefied natural gas, LNG, which in fact was a bit disrupted. But again, war in Ukraine meant, as we know, huge disruptions in the way gas is dealt with. And so its price increased effectively by around 50% over the last 12 months. As we all know, main markets are paying close attention to how governments are responding to this. And like you point out, various national governments uh, have responded to this with tax rebates and freezing of fuel duties. But at the European context, it's been a little bit different. Uh, what's the sort of two lines of thought that you, that you point out uh, that are emerging in Brussels right now? Yeah, I mean, various governments reacted to this increase in oil prices, which have disrupted consumption for households and investment for businesses. And of course, being pressured by uh, populations and companies, they had to come somehow to the rescues of these uh, agents and uh, reduce these taxes, as you, meant, as you said, even if that, that is not necessarily sound economic policy, because it might actually uh, uh, increase inflation ra rather than reduce inflation. When you provide the wrong type of fiscal stimulus at, mm. at the wrong time, that might be the impact. For this reason, the Europeans have started to think, okay, let's do this at European level rather than doing it in an uncoordinated fashion, the, the same way we are doing now. So two lines of thought emerge, an oil embargo and a price cap. The oil embargo means effectively not importing uh, oil and gas anymore from Russia. And uh, the price cap meaning, means not paying more than a certain amount. The oil embargo seems uh, kind of a strong measure to show a resolute the Europeans are against Russia. But, um, and it seems to be also the easiest way to stop financing the war of Russia and Ukraine. But behind the scenes, the point is, unfortunately, it tends to reduce the quantity of energy in circulation mm. and increase its price. So it, it tends to have the opposite effect that the Europeans are deciding to have. Vice versa, the price cap uh, has the effect of reducing the price of energy while keeping the, the quantity more or less intact. So is from an economic standpoint, much more uh, valuable. 
Unfortunately, the European seems to be more inclined towards the embargo rather than the price cap, although more recently there seems to be some opening to the second solution as well. Mm. And as, a, as an alternative to these sort of two mainstream lines of thought, you've also pointed out that a third uh, alternative has been come up, uh, you know, something which can be termed as a sort of punitive EU tariff on Russian oil that's been proposed by the US and others. What could the implications of these be and what's the probability that this is adopted? Yeah, there's a third solution, a sort of tariff that could pave the way to an embargo later on, but honestly has not been uh, really proposed at European level just yet. The point is that um, the Europeans don't want one of their policies to be enforced by the Americans, because in fact, the price cap was suggested by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, and said, if you impose an oil cap, we are going to enforce it together with you guys. And not only us, but we, do all, we would also ask all our trading partners to adhere to that price cap so that effectively uh, from being a policy of the EU, then it becomes enforced by the US and all its trading partners, as, as you know, is the vast majority of the countries in the world, which means that effectively can become um, an effective policy. Of course, the Europeans don't want one of their policies to be enforced by the Americans, let alone third countries. Um, and so it's a bit of an ideological dispute in the sense that instead of adopting the economically sound option, which yes, requires the help of the Americans, they might go for the economically unsound option, which can be uh, detrimental for uh, for Europe. And the risk is that the Europeans will have to follow the Americans on, in the only field that they really feel uncomfortable with, which is the military operations, as the Europeans would like them to finish immediately, and the Americans would prefer them to last for longer. And so they risk following the Americans in the wrong field and not following the Americans in the right field. I mean, the, the Europeans really need to put their act together, I think. Mm. Like you point out, this is happening in a sort of broader ideological battle as well. I mean, with, you know, this war, uh, the purpose of NATO has been reinstated. Uh, you know, Europe's contributing more to the NATO budget. It's led to an increase of NATO membership with Finland and Sweden possibly joining. Uh, and, you know, it's also implied the U.S. is going to start exporting its energy to Europe, uh, whereas Europe stands a lot to lose uh, from the continuation of this. So definitely... Uh, parallel trends uh, that can use, continue to impact markets uh, in a very complex way. Uh, but as always, Bernal, thank you so much for your time and insight. Thank you very much. Until next time.